What do Downton Abbey and a Broadway show set in Harlem have in common? A lot more than you might think. On the top-rated British drama where manners rule, it's 1922 and jazz is all the rage for the characters upstairs and downstairs. On this side of the pond, the musical After Midnight is bringing the music, history, and rhythm of the jazz age to present-day New York. One of the principal dancers and the director-choreographer of After Midnight have the story of jazz and the Harlem Renaissance. After Midnight, early blue weaving, lights ain't come on yet. Coming on now. After Midnight is a musical that is based on um, Harlem, Harlem Renaissance, 1930s. Um, and it's essentially, I think, it's the journey of many characters coming to the Cotton Club. This was a place where a lot of African Americans used to dance and sing and act. Out of the slavery, out of the migration, out of all of that became this surge of creativity in the African American world. Jazz, this Duke Ellington especially, um, I loved it. I loved it. I'd always been aware of it. I'd always listened to it. It's always been in my um, subconscious somewhere. Uh, but researching the show, I, I absolutely fell in love with, with this music all over again. It is un. Unbelievable. It's unbelievably powerful and evocative and it, it sounds to me like dialogue, it sounds like beautiful women, it sounds like uh, men having a conversation. It's, it's very easy to, uh, to create to this music. It's interesting in approaching the show, there, were, you know, there are some things in After Midnight that are absolutely period correct. There is some movement and some of those vocals are period correct for the 1930s. Absolutely, there is not a step that is not from the 30s in some of those numbers. In other places, I wanted to make, I wanted to make a show for, for my generation and younger, and younger than me. I didn't want to do a dusty, a dusty old um, museum piece. I really didn't, and I don't think this music is dusty or old. I think this music is is so vibrant and so alive. My wish for the show that it would be inspired by period, not bound by period. What is the improvisation in in a place where you do a show eight shows a week? There's got to be a structure that we all are following a quite a, a very sturdy structure, but it's based on jazz, and it's based on the idea that at one point there will be an improvisation. So we are all eventually waiting for it. The strategy is there to support the improvisation. And whoever's gonna catch this, right? Because it's cut in many different ways. It can be cut by the trombones, or maybe it's cut by someone's voice. Maybe it's just cut by someone's tap shoe. Like, instead of going pa-pa, they're gonna go pa-pa-pa-pa. You know, and you're like, whoa! You're like, Immediately everybody perks up because it's unusual. So it keeps us on our toes a lot. Midnight, Harlem. Once it was true, in 1932, Harlem's heartbeat was a drumbeat. One of the other things that was very important to me in After Midnight was actually having spoken word. I wanted to bring in Langston Hughes, which just seemed like the perfect, seemed the perfect choice for the show. I think um, in an evening where there's a lot of music, I think it was very important to go to zero and actually go to spoken word. Um, in some way, it resets the audience. It makes them listen again. They, they start to reattack. The ear reattacks when you have to listen to spoken word. And Langston's poetry is very evocative. It's very evocative. It's all about images. It creates tone. I believe why the audience is so, why are we so riveted? Because in the line of jazz, there is a golden thread that is called freedom. And I do believe jazz was built on, on the oppression, at the time of the oppression of, of the African Americans. So there was a time where the spirit itself was not free. And out of that came this amazing surge, this amazing dedication for freedom. Then became the scatting and the this and the that, the rhythm, and next thing you know, jazz was there. That is what the audience is being moved by it. I really am, the, I am totally convinced by it. The same way we are moved by it. So it's like there's no, you don't contain it, you can't. You can only be ready for it, right? You can only be available for it. And the audience, for some weird reason, they know it the moment they sit down. There's, even before Dooley speaks, there's something in the air originally that is already like, we feel them, they feel us, we feel the orchestra, we're like, 
Oh, let's go. Do you know what I mean? So I wanted to say that the the notion of freedom and the concept of freedom is what I feel is running the show. 